In this video, we will graph an absolute value function that is a reflection as well as a translation of the basic absolute value function y equals the absolute value of x. Before we do this though, let's compare the graph of y equals the absolute value of x to the graph of y equals the opposite of the absolute value of x. Let's begin by comparing the table of values. Notice how the outputs are y values for y equals the absolute value of x are all non-negative. To use this table to complete the table for y equals the opposite of the absolute value of x, we would change the sign of all the outputs of the y values, which give us these y values or outputs here. And if we plot these points on the coordinate plane, we have this green graph here. But the important part to notice here is that the graph of y equals the opposite of the absolute value of x is a reflection across the x-axis of the basic absolute value function y equals the absolute value of x. Notice how if we take these five points here on the basic absolute value function and then reflect them across the x-axis or change the sign of the y-coordinates, we do get the graph of y equals the opposite of the absolute value of x. And now let's take a look at our example. We want to graph y or g of x equals the opposite of the quantity x plus two plus three. The standard form of an absolute value function is y equals a times the quantity x minus h plus k, where the values of a, h, and k transform the basic absolute value function shown here. Let's identify the values of a, h, and k and describe how it will affect the graph. Because we have a negative outside the absolute value, a is going to be negative one. So because a is negative, we have a reflection across the x-axis, but because the absolute value of a is one, there is no stretch or compression. So because a goes negative one, we have a reflection across the x-axis. Next, in standard form, inside the absolute value, we have x minus h, but in our equation, we have x plus two. So we need to think of plus two as minus negative two, which is equivalent, and therefore h is negative two, because h is negative two, we have a shift left of the absolute value of negative two units, or a shift left two units. So again, because we have x plus two inside the absolute value, h is really negative two, which means we have a shift left two units. And because we have a plus three outside the absolute value, we know k is positive three, which means the graph is shifted up three units. So because k equals three, we have a shift up three units. The vertex is also h comma k, which means the vertex is negative two comma three. So before we graph this transformation though, let's verify this using an animation. So again, based upon our equation, we know a is equal to negative one, and therefore we have a reflection across the x-axis. So let's change a to negative one. Right now a is one, and we have the basic absolute value function. Notice when a is negative one, we have a reflection across the x-axis. Again, here's where a is positive one, here's where a is negative one. And now because h is negative two, we need to shift the graph left two units. Let's change h to negative two, which we can see shifts the graph left two units. And because k is three, we now shift the graph up three units. This is the graph of the given absolute value function. Let's go back and do this by hand. Let's begin by sketching the parent function, or basic absolute value function, onto the coordinate plane. Remember to the right of the vertex, we have a slope of one, to the left, we have a slope of negative one. Let's plot some key points. Sketch the part on the right. Plot some key points. And sketch the part on the left. Let's begin by reflecting the graph across the x-axis, which means we will change the sign of the y-coordinates of these key points. So the vertex won't change, but then we'll have a point here, here, and here. And to the right of the vertex, we'll have a point here, here, and here. So here's the reflection across the x-axis. So that's complete. Let's go ahead and erase the original absolute value function. 
And now we need to take the points on this graph and shift them left two units and up three units. Let's start with the vertex. We would go left two and up three. Here's the final vertex. And now let's pick one point to the right of the vertex and one point to the left of the vertex. And again, shift each point left two and up three. So starting with this point here, we will go left two, up three. And let's also do the same for this point here. Left two, up three. Notice by using just these three points, we have enough points to make a nice graph of the given absolute function, which we know will be a V-shape. So at the left of the vertex, this would be the graph. Notice how the slope is positive one. And to the right, this would be the graph. Notice how the slope is negative one. And now we go and erase the green graph. Our final graph is the blue graph. We can always verify our graphs by completing a table of values. To do this, we just start with the x value of the vertex, which is negative two. Let's put that in the middle of the table. And then we'll select two values less than negative two and two values greater than negative two. So let's list negative three, negative four, and then negative one and zero. And you can verify the y values or outputs for the given absolute value function. When x is negative four, y is one. When x is negative three, y is two. When x is negative two, y is three. When x is negative one, y is two. And when x is zero, y is one. And all these points are on our graph, which verifies our graph is correct. And then finally, we can always check our work by using graphing software, which I've shown here. This does verify our work is correct. I hope you found this helpful.